looks like so much fun. Our very first guest is a, uh, uh, our first guest in the new studio is a former NFL defensive tackle who played for the Patriots, the Dolphins, the Seahawks, the Giants, and Washington. He's an accomplished rapper. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some bars here today yeah. uh, on a Thursday morning. And now a WWE certified superstar, AJ Francis, AKA Top Doll. I haven't seen you in years. I know, it's been great to be back with you again. I mean, we used to do this in New York and now that we're out in LA. I didn't expect LA to be the cold and rainy city. You yeah, know? It's that not was a, fun. that was crazy. But uh, I need that highlight package because I was looking good. We I'm will we will bring it for you. <laughs> we have it for you. We have SmackDown tomorrow. Yeah. Are you excited? Uh, very much so. Like um, a year ago, watching WrestleMania from home. Um, not being a part of the festivities uh, after everything I wanted to do while I was in WWE. Being back now, being able to be a part of WrestleMania weekend in LA, it's incredible. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Do you have a favorite WrestleMania moment? Uh, yeah. Like ever? Like, as a fan? Just either. Yeah, I would say WrestleMania 18, um, The Rock versus Hulk Hogan in Toronto. Um, Hulk Hogan was the reason that I first started wrestling when I was like one years old. Yeah. And, and like, The Rock is the reason that I'm sitting before you today. So like, the two of them have one of the greatest matches of all time at WrestleMania 18, and that would be my, that would be my favorite. Now, last time I saw you, you I mean, I'm just gonna say, you look a little different. I do. You look a lot different. Yeah. How much weight have you lost in how short of time? Uh, in about the last eight months, I've lost 105 pounds. I was like 370 when we re-signed uh, to WWE and then I'm um, 265 now. It took uh, a lot of work, a lot of water, a lot of good choices with food, a lot of days and This, is, and this is what's so annoying about men. <laughs> You just stop drinking like diet soda and you drop 100 pounds. See, the problem like... was it was a diet. It was straight yeah. sugar soda. And really? Uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, a lot more. I'm drinking like two, three gallons of water a day now. Like I go, like we said earlier, it's the truth. I go to the bathroom every half hour. But it's, <laughs> if you can either go to the bathroom every half hour or you could be 370 pounds. There's choices there. And what's I made what's choice. motivating you? Um, you know, the guys at the top of the car, the guys I see in the locker room, they got great bodies, great physiques, and they work all the time on their physiques and like I want to get to where they're at and like I don't want to be the big chubby guy I want to be the big shredded guy can I just ask you why you don't want to be the chubby guy because listen everybody's shredded now <laughs> yeah, I, when true. I look at WWE everyone's shredded everyone's yeah. an athlete so why not be you know you're always looking for your to stand out right yeah. Unless, I would want to put on the most weight and then just sit on people I mean that's like an the old days yeah see I mean I could do that just like Andre the Giant yeah um, but the thing is to me uh, in this new age of wrestling, um, the way that the guys move around and the way that they are athletically gifted is just like trying to uh, be a, a, a different person is something that I could do and something that I did do very well as you showed the highlight. Yes. But I also enjoy sleeping through the night and not coughing you know, on my own spit while yeah, I'm tra it's sleeping because which I, love. I am trying to like actively make better decisions with my life because I've been through a lot and you know, I have a lot of family history with different medical things and I had to take care of you myself. You lost your mom when she was really young. Yeah, yeah, and I, actually there was, we were on studio together and um, when it happened, uh, it was it was in New York, um, and I found out in between our sets, and that oh was gosh. yeah it was and I had went out there and I mean did the thing with you guys and mm -hmm. you know I pushed through it to finish the what I was supposed to do there but like that was a rough day and that really puts it in the back of your mind like like my mom died she was 46 I was 28 at the time like if I live her life then my life's already halfway over so I had wanted to start making better decisions. It's good perspective for everybody watching. We can all yeah. use that. And you are you are living your dream. And yeah. I think I'm so happy that I get to sit and talk to you and I'm wishing yeah. you, like, I don't want, I, I will watch SmackDown tomorrow just to cheer Please you on. Do. I will, I will, absolutely. Because you're someone who I talked to years ago and you went through what you tried, you know, went team to team in the NFL, you did your thing. And you sat with me years ago now, before the pandemic and said, I what I really want is WWE. And now you're doing it mm -hmm. and you're popping off. How did you do it? Man, it was, uh, you know, I, I, I'm blessed with the fact that I played in the NFL and WWE's really big on athletes, right? So you got college athletes now that have NIL deals with the WWE before they even leave college, yeah. right? So like back then it wasn't like that for me. I knew getting to the NFL was all I had to do to make sure that I would get a tryout in WWE because like I said, they love pro athletes. And so I get to an opportunity to go to uh, tryout 
and I killed it. And then six months later, I was signed. So like, it was only a year between the end of my football career and the beginning of my WWE. My career. man, hey, we love it. Okay. You have your persona, top uh -huh. dollar. We're gonna uh -huh. get into all of that, and you can see it on SmackDown. I mean, WWE fans are going crazy for you, which is amazing. But you, you know, you played for all the teams that I mentioned, uh, which means you had a stop in Seattle. I want to mm -hmm. talk about that really quick. What, I, I asked you before we came on if what was your favorite stop in your NFL career. You said that. Are you yes. surprised Pete Carroll's still doing this? No, because Pete is like. Like a fountain of youth himself, you know what I'm saying? Like he personally gets you energized every day. Like you would think a lot, a lot of coaches, players at least, hear their coaches and they're like, oh man, I'm not trying to hear him. Yeah. He, he just keeps running off. But Pete actually makes you want to like do things. Like and everything in Seattle is just competition based. Like practice is harder than games sometimes, but like everything else is cool. Meetings are cool, lifting is cool, the city's cool. It was my first time living on the West Coast. Yeah. So like, and we made the playoffs, it's the only time I ever made the playoffs. So it was like definitely my favorite time. On that team, who would have had the best persona? I mean, Pete Carroll could have Michael had Michael some... Bennett. Oh gosh. Michael, Michael Bennett, Bennett for I forgot sure. and Michael Bennett was on that team. <laughs> Michael Bennett was on there and Cam Chancellor, Sherm, Richard Sherman. Like I played with all those guys. I know, so, 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 so who would be the best WWE persona? Ooh. Bennett. Yeah, it would be Mike, because he's got the size, the athleticism, the gift of gab, but, you know, Sherm also has that, too. Yeah, you got Can't. that dance, though, with, with uh, Bennett. Yeah, Bennett true. can dance. Yeah, true, that, also. That's good. Uh, okay, now let's talk quickly about you were in Washington. Were you with Kirk, Kirk Cousins then? Yes, I was. So, let's just, his persona has taken a bit of a turn. Yeah. AJ, uh, let's talk about this, because he was you always from Captain Mr. Kirk, the Kirk yes, Bangs. so then, you know, he was Mr. <laughs> Michigan State, Sparty on, uh, okay. nerd, and then this happened. So. Hey, Big Drip Kirk, I see you. Hey, it's funny, because, like, Kirk is, he has his personality, he always did it. Like, did he? Yeah, he just didn't show it a no, lot. No, 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 tell me what his personality is, then. See, what are you talking about? See, he's like, he's like the, the, the nerdy homeboy that hangs with all the brothers no, on the team. No, nerdy homeboys that hang with guys on the team do not drive conversion vans <laughs> and have, like, bumper stickers. Like, hey, what are you talking about? Hey, man, you know, he went to Minnesota, he had to change his vibe up a little bit. Uh, um, when he left D.C., like, I, I thought he was going to be in D.C. forever. I mean, D.C. still hasn't got a better no, quarterback got that than check. him. He you know just, what I'm saying? Like, they just kept backing up yeah, that Brinks truck into yeah. his backyard. And he, he could have kept doing that in D.C. and they decided they wanted to go a different direction and it's worked better for Minnesota. Hey, you're Minnesota. being too nice. How, do, how can Kirk Cousins work on his persona? Like, the, have you um, seen the man wear dance? More, wear, yes, wear more chains. You know what I'm saying? More. We need more Kirk chains. We need those oh, chains. Oh, gosh, that's absolutely <laughs> terrible and terrifying. Okay, um, let's talk about... Audience here, because uh -huh. you know I know what it's like to be at an NFL stadium. You uh -huh. know what it's like to play in front of fans. Uh -huh. How does it compare to the crowd at a WWE situation? So it's it's completely different because fans at football games are reactionary. Like they react to what happens on the field, so right? True. And so like if good things are going for the home team, the crowd's going crazy. If bad things are going for the home team, it's a pretty much silent. In WWE, fans are going to be a part of the show. They're going to be interactive. Got it. So if it's boring that they're watching, they're not just going to sit on their hands. They're going to literally chant boring. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. if if it's if they love what they're seeing, they're going to chant, this is awesome. They're going to do everything. Like whatever they got to do to get themselves involved. And that's cool because you can play off that as a performer. Like I say things a lot of the times, like especially we go to like D.C. Like I'm from D.C. Yeah, like so I, you got and it. And I played in D.C. But like... The whole time I was on the mic, all I did was talk bad about the commanders, right? Because yeah. I knew all that would do is make them hate me, which is my objective, right? Okay. So, so, so if you so bring me, if you were to say what your persona is in Top Dollar, mm -hmm. what tell, give me like what your persona is for people? Uh, who hip hop CEO, um, <laughs> uh, street guy that is ready to throw down at all times and it will not let you play with his name. See, cause Top Dollar is a cool name, but it's the kind of name that people try to like play with and come up with other ways that, to, and I, I use, I don't know if you've ever seen The Wire, but I use uh, like Marlo Stansfield in The Wire. Okay. And I'm always like, my name is my name. Right? Okay, that you do See, that. That's my thing. So like that's how I, I if someone calls me, you know, they uh they call me flop dollar or they call me bottom dollar or something. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. gotta make amends to that and let them know that my name is my name. That's how we do that. So when you uh 
do you like do things that fall flat ever in front of the crowd? Like, do you get oh, to yeah. workshop it like a comedian? Gets yeah, to no, I did. A, I went to do a dive one time, and my leg was like, "You ain't diving, big fella." And, really? And I got caught on the top rope, and it, <gasps> and it happens. It's live TV, but you got to keep going with it. Like, I'm still recovering from, like, my leg is still recovering from that. That was months ago, but it's like. You still got to just push through and cut. I mean, it's just like in football, like if I played a, when I was on the Dolphins, yeah. I played a whole game with a Lovely. torn uh, torn meniscus. You just got to do what you got to do. Uh, okay, they want me to, what do they want me to ask? The finishing move? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, can we see this finishing move? Top dollar finishing move. I think we have some footage of it. Here it oh, is. Yeah. What do you call this? Talk me through. Oh, so, oh AJ, AJ, uh, AJ. Yeah. So, Right here. Oh my gosh. This is called the world's strongest wasteland. All right, Maya, get over here. We're going to practice this. Because <laughs> the, the move for the guy I'm holding in my arms is yeah. called the world's strongest slam. And the move no, for, no, the, no, no. for the guy in my shoulders <laughs> is called a wasteland. So I call it the world's strongest wasteland. And why was your niece about to come Maya, get put through a table? Maya can come here whenever she wants. Maya, want to come over here and sit with me? No, OK. I was joking. I thought maybe, would you want to try that? Yeah, I mean, you went on the biggest roller coaster in the world. This is Top Dollar. This is my friend AJ. This is I like Maya. your jacket. Doesn't she look cool? Want to come sit with me? Sure. All right, let's keep talking here. So you, you are here in Los Angeles. He's going to be in WrestleMania wrestling, which is super fun. You are participating in the um, Andre the Giant Battle yeah. Royale tomorrow. Give me the lowdown. Like, what's the best storyline? Uh, so the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is a traditional over-the-top battle royal. The only way that you can be eliminated is by being thrown over the top rope. A lot of greats have won it. Um, you got guys <clears throat> like Jey Uso who won it recently. Look at that. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, he's one of the top guys on the card right now, and one of the biggest storylines. So uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of opportunities that get to be given to people when they win this, and I'm very much looking forward to winning. Yeah, is is it? Is there camaraderie between you guys, like in an NFL locker room, or is it like you're? In, in... Y yes and no. Yeah. Yes and no. It's just like NFL locker room. We're like. Are y'all in one locker room though? So it's like you're in there with your yeah. competition. Yeah. That's so it's, weird. it's but it's just like the NFL. So like I might no, be. No, because Richard Sherman's not out there with Michael Crabtree in the same locker room before a game. No, but he's in the he's in the locker room with other defensive backs who he got to earn a job over. Yeah, you know? that's true. So got it's it. like so like I might be best friends with an offensive of linemen, but when we do one-on-ones, yeah. we, we ain't homeboys, you know? We're like, I gotta eat, you gotta eat. We, we out here working right. for it. And it's the same way in WWE locker room. Like, we're all cool, we kick it back there, we play video games, we play cards, it's a great time. But at the end of the day, everybody's trying to get to that top spot. And if you gotta step on somebody to get there, that's oh, just how I be. That's what, that's what it is. Now, if I had a WWE persona, what would it be, or a name, or a, can mm, I? Give Slay K. Slay K, okay, I like that. <laughs> I wonder what my finishing move would be, just talking someone to death. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to talk to somebody. I think yeah. that's what it would be. Uh, okay, uh, I think, I mean, that's kind of it. I think, are, are we good? What else do we want to ask you about? What else do you want to talk about? Um, I'm just really excited to be here in L.A. Want to talk know. about music? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do. I mean, what's going on with your music? I know that that's uh, been a huge part of your career. You could I, basically have done anything that you wanted to. You're with wrestling right now, yeah. but you could have a music career, right? Yeah, it's good. It's cool because, like, music has always been my lifeblood, and yet, like, I found a way to incorporate it into what I love in WWE. Yeah. Right? And um, it's cool because my crew hit row. Um, me, myself, B Fab, Ashanti, the Adonis, the three of us, like, we are like a big family, right? So, like, we're. Even though we are a group in wrestling, like we don't do nothing without each other. Like for example, last night we went to Roscoe's, and then on the way home, my car uh, got a flat tire. Oh, no. So in the rain in Crenshaw, we was uh, putting a, a donut on the back tire. You know what I'm saying? So like, but I called them. I was like, exactly. Yo, I need your help. You know what I'm saying? And they was like, All right, cool. They just came well, through. Well, it's not but, supposed to rain here. So I know. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I was told thing. that it never rains in Southern California. The taxes this is the are song. too high here. It's not right? for it to rain. So okay, it's like, you, but you dropped a new song. Yeah, I got a new song coming out. Um, I just debuted it uh, last night on DJ Who Kid for Shade 45. Okay, uh, let's, really let's hear it. You debuted it last night? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's listen. So much bread, I got a will, and that's really real. <laughs> got a crib like Uncle Phil, and that's really real. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Where can we hear really it? Real. Uh, when it comes out, it'll be on all platforms, but it, it has not, it hasn't been released yet. It's just I'm doing my, my press for it now, getting, there, getting everybody's ears open to it so that I can drop it very soon. Has there been a successful athlete turned rapper? Yeah, there's there's a little bunch. You got who's, da who's the you got Dame one? Dalla is the yes. Dame Dalla is actually a good rapper. Um, there's a lot of athletes that 
have songs, but they're not good rappers. Yeah, Conrad uh, in my ear is saying Shaq has bars. Oh, Shaq definitely has bars. Shaq has a song with Biggie. It's yeah. one of my favorite songs ever. No, you can't, can't not mention Nate Burleson because it'll just be sad. You got, yeah. And Nate's got Nate, bars. Nate be spitting too, you know. Mm, yeah. Nate, every time me and Nate were on set together, you know, I always had to show him who the real spitter was. But, you know, that's my yeah, guy. he's passionate. Do you have any that you want to drop some bars for us? You got a little something? Yeah, I mean, you know what? Tomorrow's the Andre. I'll do something for you. All right. Here we go. Um, last week, I got the text I was going to be in the Andre. First thing I did was hit a Shante. That's the way you start mania in LA after party with shorties at the tele, the cele. Bration will contribute to sensation and jubilation across hey. the nation. The day my haters dreaded like a Haitian. From atop a giant shoulders, you can see what's shaking. Not John Tenta, but I see the earth quaking, an avalanche of hating, rap god forsaken. Kiss my no hesitation. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Woo, AJ! Right, thank you. Check out his new music. Good luck to you and SmackDown. Say good luck, Maya. Good luck. Say Appreciate kick you. Kick We love you, AJ. I'm about to get some gear made like that. That uh, looks cool. This that's is, fly. Uh, this, this, she looks a lot cooler than I do. She's got blue hair. I got it all going on. She could be in the WWE. She could. Back right here on the Fanatics. Got a crib like I'm 